Hey everybody, Kuroda, Rob here, as always. How's it going, guys? So, to coincide with my Top 20 N64 Games video, I thought I would do a tier list of N64 games, because why not? Um, yeah, it's basically going to be similar to how I always do these tier lists, where I just rank all these N64 games that are on this random list that I found on Tier Maker, and, you know, see how it goes here. Uh, there's definitely a few of these I have not played, so I am kind of curious to see, you know, pe I'm kind of curious about people's reactions to some of the games I haven't played, because there's a couple big ones on here I haven't played, so we'll see how it goes, but it's not perfect. There's some games missing, uh, as far as I'm concer concerned, but to be honest with you, I mean, if it was any more games than this, this might be like a two-hour video, so I'm going to try to be concise with this one, because there's 40 different games, and yeah, so I, I, again, don't want this to be like the longest video ever created. I doubt that'll happen, but <laughs> anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's do this tier list. So I think I'm just going to go, I noticed the games are basically organized alphabetically, so I'm just going to go alphabetically, I think, actually, and uh, just, yeah, do that because it'll be the easiest way to do it, so <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, okay. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, so, starting out with 007, The World Is Not Enough, the sequel to The Amazing GoldenEye, which I have never played. I haven't played it, I've seen some footage of this game. It was not developed by Rare like its predecessor. Uh, it looks quite similar in terms of just being a first-person shooter. Um, I don't really know the movie well at all, I've never seen it, so I don't know like, what the similarities are to the movie. I don't really know what the similarities are to GoldenEye 007, but it's it's gonna go in the never played pile. I would guess if it's anything close to GoldenEye, it'd probably be maybe not quite up there where GoldenEye is gonna be on, on this tier list, but it's, you know, I imagine it's a good game. So I, I haven't, I, I really don't know very much at all about this game. So yeah, off to a bad start. Same with 1080 Snowboarding, never played it. It's one of those games that I have always heard about. Um, actually, I could, you know what, no, I'm I'm wrong about that. I have played this, this game. I had a friend who had this when I was younger and I played it like once. I still almost want to kind of put it in the never played section though because like playing it once, is it, it's really hard to judge it. You know, judge a game off of playing it once. So yeah, I don't feel like I'm necessarily qualified to do that. I'm not into snowboarding. My friend was uh, growing up, so from what I remember, it seemed pretty cool for a snowboarding game. Just like to me, a sort of like a generic snowboarding type game. I don't know. Again, not into snowboarding. Barely played it. If it, you know, if I even did, I'm pretty sure I did. But yeah, not qualified to rank that one either. So sorry. <laughs> Zero for two here. This one I am qualified to uh, say I played Banjo-Kazooie on the channel. I, I didn't finish it. Really liked it though. Uh, really, really liked the game. You know, it's Rareware. I mean, what can I say? And, and you know what? I'll probably put Banjo-Tooie on here as well. I, I'll be honest. I haven't played Banjo-Tooie nearly as much. I've barely touched that game. Uh, Rachel had a copy of it somewhere and I don't know what happened to it. But from everything I've seen with that game, it looks very similar to Banjo-Kazooie. A lot of people say that it's a bit over... I'm getting ahead of myself here, but like ba basically, Banjo-Kazooie is often, like by a lot of people, considered one of the best 3D platformers. And I think, having played it myself, I really liked it. Like, it, the way the controls are set up, the different moves that Banjo and Kazooie, Kazooie can do, the levels, I just love how the game is designed, I love the humor in it, and Banjo-Tooie just sort of seems like more of the same, except some accuse it of being like a little bit excessive. I didn't, I can't say I've played enough of the game to say if that's true or not, but to me it's similar enough where I really feel the two games just should really go side by side. So Banjo-Tooie is one that I really want to play more in depth. I really don't have as much experience with that game as the first one, but you know, to me they go, they kind of go together. So they'll be sitting up there in S tier. Um, I think it's deserved. I think Banjo-Kazooie, you know, only playing it once, really. I, I That one time I played it left a pretty big impression. I, I really enjoyed it. 
And um, there's some memes, like uh, the Bon- <laughs> the Bano meme. <laughs> the people who watch me stream it will know what I'm talking about, but... Yeah, really fun, charming little 3D platformer. Cruise in USA. Never played it. Um, yeah. Uh, I hate to say it. <laughs> Another game I haven't played. I, it, it's kind of like a racing type of game uh, for the N64. I played F-Zero, I played Mario Kart, I played Mickey Speedway USA, good game, but never played that one. So, yeah, got nothing to say about cruising USA. So, definitely uh, not winning any uh, points here. Speaking of racing games, though, Diddy Kong Racing. I'm going to throw comfortably in a B tier. Uh, there's a really famous video, and by famous, I mean within my channel. <laughs> A uh, famous uh, a video of me playing this game drunk. If I think of it, I'll put a tag right here uh, t to that video. It's it's a bit disgraceful <laughs> and kind of silly, but yeah, Rachel and I played this. I was annihilated while I was playing this, and uh, yeah, it was it was a really funny video. But it's a fun game. Diddy Kong Racing, like again, um, Rareware kind of put their own stamp on Mario Kart. I think in a lot of ways it exceeds Mario Kart. Um, it's really fun. It's a Really cool two-player game. It's really fun multiplayer. I love the different vehicles that you have in the game. There's like a bunch of other different modes. Really, really fun, solid racer. Probably better than than Mario Kart, if you were to ask me. But that's. I'll say at the time Mario Kart was better. I'll say that Mario Kart 64. I'm talking about. And overall, yeah, I probably would say I like Mario Kart 64 better. But I think the better made game is Diddy Kong Racing. And in some ways, I think it's also aged a little better than Mario Kart 64, but I'm not trying to show, throw shade at Mario Kart 64, I really love Mario Kart 64, but I think retroactively Diddy Kong Racing is the stronger game. Donkey Kong 64, um, you know, this didn't make my top 20 Super Nintendo, or sorry, N64 games. I've played a little bit of this, um, I'm gonna put it at C tier for now. I haven't, another game, unfortunately, that I haven't really gone through completely. Um, I liked what I played of it. I wasn't overly impressed from what I'm... I think from what I've seen of, of the game and what I played of the game, I can see where people are coming from that kind of criticize it for being a bit more, you know, being sort of the excessive version of Banjo-Kazooie, um, which people say more so about this game than Banjo-Tooie. I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard for me to have a, a, a strong opinion on it either way. From what I played, it didn't really... If, like we we tried playing this on the channel a little bit, and it didn't it didn't interest me like it didn't pique my interest enough for me to want to play it more. So that doesn't mean I won't go back and play it, and maybe I'll redo a tier list or you know my top twenty and sixty four uh, games list after I've played this more, and my opinion will be different. But I don't know something about Donkey Kong sixty four never really didn't. It just didn't super impress me, but it's it's not a bad game either. I, I don't know how to explain it. I think I just need to play it more, so I don't know. Uh, Doom 64. I've actually played a, a bit of this too. I, I, I really liked it. I'm putting it on B tier. Um, Doom, you know, I, I've always had a... I like Doom. I've always had a bit of an issue. I don't know if... I know I've talked about this before on the channel, but for those who don't know, I tend to have issues with first-person shooters because I have motion sickness and I get nausea. Um, you know, I, I've tried playing, the, I have the newest Doom for Switch, and I really liked it, but I could barely play it because it made me sick. I remember playing this back in the day, and I've played it since, and I didn't have that issue, uh, then, but I'm almost hesitant to play it because <laughs> of, of, uh, that reason, but I mean, I don't know, I think maybe the graphics being what they are, I, I might be okay with this game, but from what I remember playing of it, it was a really fun game. Like, it was a really fun, just killing demons. Uh, you know, it's it's very reminiscent of, like, the original Dune game. Or, I keep saying Dune. It's very rem reminiscent of the original Doom, uh, which is a really great game. So, I don't know. I, I really enjoyed what I've played of it, but a, kind of a game I need to play more, I think. Okay, next is Excite Bike 64. I have not played that game either. So I've got nothing to say about it. I played the original for the NES, which was all right. Uh, I've heard good things about Excite Bike 64, but never really played much of it, that game, to be honest. So, yeah, I got really nothing to say about it. F-Zero X, I'm going to throw in the A tier. I think it's a 
It's a really, really solid racing game. Played that game for the first time last year, and I got hooked on it a little bit. I mean, everything's really... I was really impressed with it. Like, the, the, the graphics, you know, um, it was really fun. Uh, I think I said on my Top 20 uh, N64 video that it was... Uh, I was really impressed with how the frame rate held up with the, you know, sort of the fast-paced... Um, nature of the game, uh, more so again than Mario Kart. Uh, funny enough, like Mario Kart 64 is kind of the most popular, but I don't know if it's the best game for the N64. F-Zero X is fantastic though, I, I really really liked it. I don't own a copy of this game, and I'd really really like to own it because uh, I really really enjoyed what I've played of it, and I'd really like to have the original hardware and be able to play it on that, so yeah, um, loved F-Zero X and I think it comfortably should fit in the A tier position, possibly an S tier game to be honest. I enjoyed it that much. Okay, GoldenEye 007. That's gonna go right on S tier as well. I mean, this is a game I did grow up with. I played a bunch. I, like I said, I didn't play the sequel. Uh, the World is Not Enough. If it's a sequel even, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, 007, one of the greatest first person shooters of all time. Uh, revolutionized the genre. Fucking super fun game to play multiplayer. I've, I've played this with a bunch of people. I always have a blast with it. I've been lucky enough to play four player with some friends and things and uh, I really really enjoy the game. So yeah, I, I don't know what to say about GoldenEye that hasn't been said already. Kind of cool that it made it to the Switch Online and I think to the Xbox as well and people can actually now play it like online together and stuff so that's cool. I, I think uh, I think it's really neat that, that it finally is available for people and people can go back and play it because it holds up really well. It's really fun. Okay, the next two games. Um, I've not played Harvest Moon 64. And Hey You Pikachu, I have a copy of it, but I don't have the microphone, so I haven't played that either. Uh, I would probably put, though, from what I've seen of Hey You Pikachu, I may just for the sake of it put it in the meh category. You're literally just giving commands to Pikachu through the microphone. I mean, it doesn't... Like, I'm a, I'm a huge Pokemon fan, and, I, nah, you know, it doesn't, didn't really appeal to me, you know, the fact that you need that microphone, and it's kind of hard to get now, you know, that's kind of a point against it, and, I don't know, it's just, the whole concept of Hey You Pikachu, it's just, it, it was a weird idea for a game, and, like, I, I kind of understand the idea behind it, but, you know, from what little I've seen of it, just not really like again. I haven't played it, but I'm just, just nah, not really interested the Next game is a big one on the never played. I haven't played like all these why am I even making this list? No, actually Pretty much every other game on this list. I've played looking at it. Yeah, it's just that the the, the first few I uh, happen to be you know a bunch of games. I haven't played Jeff Force Gemini. It is number one on the N64 games that I want to play. Uh, it looks like a really cool sci-fi sort of 3D platformer type shooter uh, developed by Rareware. I think it looks awesome. I've seen a lot of gameplay footage of it uh, and I just don't have a copy of it. I need to maybe get a copy of that on the N64 and run through it sometime because it's one of those games that I always hear good things about and have never played but I have to say it is number one Number one on my list of games to uh, that really should that I really should play. So that might be the next sort of not new game, but next game that I play for the first time on the N64. So you know, uh, it really looks like it's kind of right up my alley. So definitely gonna have to have to play that sometime. Then I'm looking at this. Thankfully, all the almost pretty much all these other. I'm looking at this now, and pretty much all these games I have played, so I feel good about that because it's like, how do I make a tier list when I haven't played half of these, but all these now I've played. So uh, we're running through some Mario games, whatever. Um, we got some Kirby 64, just shy of S tier in my opinion. I love Kirby 64, um, very close, to, might be my favorite Kirby game. You know, I had this one as a kid. Uh, this was one of those games I unexpectedly got, I didn't ask for it, it was just given to me by somebody. Can't even tell you who at this point, but uh, loved it. Uh, was my, I think it might have been my first Kirby game, that or Kirby Superstar. I don't know which one I played first, because my friend owned Kirby Superstar. No, you know what? I might have played Kirby on the Game Boy first. 
if I'm really thinking about it. I think I might have played Kirby's Dream Land. That might have been the first Kirby game I played. But this was like the first Kirby game I really, really got into. And I love it. Um, the transformations, like how you can combine abilities and, you know, the boss fights are fun. The characters are cute and charming. It's it's a great game, man. I, I really, really love Kirby 64. So, um, definitely in the A tier. For the S tier, Mario Golf. I freaking love Mario Golf. I, I really, really do. Um, you know, it's. I realize I'm probably in the minority there. So Mario Golf is definitely one of those games where if you're not really into it or you didn't grow up with it, I can really see it being one of somebody's least favorite N64 games because, you know, the controls are a little weird. It's not the most accessible game, I feel like, for the newcomer, so I, I can understand why. This is a very much a personal pick. Uh, I spent many countless hours playing Mario Golf. It kind of got me into golf, really. I'm not, like, huge into golf, but I do enjoy playing it. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I just really enjoy it. It's a, it's a fun game. It's very relaxing. Um, I've got a whole drunken Mario Golf series on my channel where I play this game, and uh, I realize that's a little weird and niche, but, you know, I like that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, just solid. Mario Golf's great. Mario Kart 64, I'm gonna put in the A tier. Uh, a lot of, more so the memories of playing it, and uh, you know, I can go back to it and play it and enjoy it, and the battle mode's great and everything, but like I said, it it, it is, it doesn't hold up as well in my opinion. Um, you know, the, I think there's a few issues with it. I always have frame rate issues whenever I play it on my N64, but it was fun. I mean, there's no denying it. I mean, it, it, was, it was the first you know, 3D racing game I played. I, I remember getting this for Christmas and just being addicted to it, just playing it. I remember one night I, I stayed up like almost all night playing it. It was uh, it was one of the first times I ever did that with a game. And uh, just, yeah, a lot of great memories with it. So it's hard for me not to, you know, it's hard for me not to at least, you know, acknowledge that and like, like the nostalgia of that and, and not think back fondly on the game. And you know, I, I can enjoy it. It's not that I don't enjoy the game, but it's hard to explain, I guess. It just it just hasn't stood the test of time so much. And there's been so many other great Mario Karts since that one. Mario Kart Wii, Mario Kart 8. Um, I, you know, a lot of people like Double Dash. I'm hit or miss with Double Dash, but even like Mario Kart 7. Like pretty much every Mario Kart after it's been better than it, in my opinion. And I like Super Mario Kart better than Mario Kart 64. So f these days it's, well, maybe it's better than Super Circuit probably, but uh, yeah. It's just, in terms of like Mario Kart games, it's not necessarily, it's probably like, it's fallen quite far down the list for me, but it's still, it's still a good game. These three are all essentially the same game. I'm gonna give these all a high B tier. It's Mario Party 1, 2, and 3, obviously. Um, love these games, uh, aside from maybe like GoldenEye, probably the ultimate multiplayer experience for the N64. I mean, yeah, Mario Party's a blast, man. I, I love Mario Party. Um, Especially if you got four people, it's the best way to play it. Four players. Four players sounds like a party. A Mario party. Referencing my friend on my old channel. Nobody's gonna get the reference, but I enjoy it. Anyway, um, yeah, so, you know, the minigame concept, the boards, it's it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy those games. Um, you know, they each kind of bring something new to the table. The first Mario party gets kind of all the credit for starting it and is really fun, and then the second one has all a bunch of the mini games in the first, plus more and the costumes, and then the third one adds dual mode, adds Waluigi and Daisy. So yeah, they all I think have something to bring uh, to the table, and they're all essentially the same game. So I'm just gonna put them all together in a in a nice cozy B tier. I think I think they're they're really good. I'm also gonna put Mario Tennis there, um, maybe a little bit above the, the others. Uh, really fun game, love it. Um, didn't play it as much as Mario Golf. I liked Mario Golf a lot more, personally, but uh, Mario Tennis is still really great. It's really fun multiplayer. Um, you know, I used to go through the tournaments in it and enjoy that and stuff, but retroactively, it's a game I don't really go back to and don't really have as much nostalgia or... I know nostalgia is in everything, but you know, it, it, I don't think it's... It's not as replayable as Mario Golf, in my opinion, so... Anyway, I know they're different, but... In my opinion, it's, you know, it, Mario Tennis is really good, I like it, but it's not, it doesn't wow me like Mario Golf does. Mega Man 64, I'm gonna put this kinda in the meh pile. 
I've barely played this game, but it just seems like one of those games like Castlevania where it just didn't translate well to 3D. Um, I'm sure there are other Mega Man games since that have. I don't know. I don't know the series well. Uh, the Mega Man X games are awesome for the Super Nintendo. Mega Man 64... You know, it, it, again, like Castlevania tried to do it as well on the N64. They had a much better luck with Symphony of the Night, whereas I think Mega Man, from what I, I recall, Mega, the Mega Man X games kind of moved to the PlayStation, where they fared a bit better. But uh, yeah, Mega Man 64, cool idea, you know, just didn't quite work, in my opinion. So, uh, Namco Museum 64. I'm actually going to give a B tier. I had this game. Uh, this is a this is just sort of a collection of. Um, you know, Namco, classic Namco games. I love Galaga, Dig Dug, Pac-Man. This was honestly my first exposure to some of these games, particularly Galaga and Dig Dug, and um, really fun little collection, pole position. I remember getting this for my aunt and really enjoying it back in the day. Um, it's nothing special at the same time because it's essentially a game of ports, I guess. I don't know, but I do have, you know, fond memories of playing it, and they're all good games, so I think middle of the road. You know, ranking for this is uh, is a pretty good, pretty good place to put it. But uh, I did spend many, many hours playing Galaga. I love Galaga. I will crush Galaga at the arcade, like at an arcade or like there's there was actually um, a Galaga machine recently at a hot dog place we went to, and I was trying to go for the high score, but my daughter's like pulling at my arm, you know, wanting to do other stuff. So had to be a dad, so couldn't get the high score in Galaga. But someday, someday. Anyway, back to S tier here. Paper Mario, right to the to S tier. Uh, as you guys who have watched the video will know, this ranked pretty high on my um, top 20 N64 games list. I love Paper Mario. Uh, I think it holds up well. I've gone back to it a few times since you know I played it when originally, and uh, it's it's a fantastic game. Like it's right up there with Super Mario RPG in my opinion. One of the very best um, Mario RPG games and. One of the best Mario games, really. It's it's fantastic. Love the story, love the characters, especially uh, the partners in like Colorado and a few others. But uh, yeah, really really fun game and probably holds up better than most other games on the N64. Perfect Dark. <clears throat> I think Perfect Dark does goes in the A tier. I have this game on my N64. I really really like it. I think GoldenEye is better. This is sort of the spiritual successor of it, I think. But it's got that kind of sci-fi, cyberpunk thing going for it, which I really, really like. Um, I think Perfect Dark, have uh, had I played it a little more, I might possibly move up even farther. It's another game I want to revisit, but I've really liked what I've played of it. And I like I, I think I think that they really did a fantastic job kind of expanding on the ideas uh, that they put into GoldenEye. And, um, you know, Joanna, Joanna Dark's a cool character. You have the, I forget the alien's name. I think his name's Elvis or something. <laughs> In Perfect Dark, he's pretty cool, and uh, yeah, the story's fun, the multiplayer is really good uh, from what I've played of it, and yeah, it's just a very solid game by Rare, I, I really love it. So yeah, Perfect Dark. Pilot Wing 64, I've not really played a ton of this game, um, I love the Super Nintendo game. I'm putting it on C tier because it's not, I mean, I'm not even a really a big Pilot Wings fan of for the Super NES either. To be honest with you, not trying to throw shade at it, but I find just trying like flight simulator stuff and like trying to, you know, kind of land on a target, parachuting and stuff, just kind of boring. To be honest with you, I don't really understand the appeal of it. It's like okay, but I'll say Donkey Kong 64 is definitely better than it. Um, um yeah, it's it's just it's just bland in my opinion. You know, no, not trying to throw shade at it for you fans of it, but doesn't really do much for me. Yeah, Pilot Wings, I don't know. Got really nothing else to say about it. Uh, Pokemon Snap, I'm gonna put in a B tier, because it's a great game. A little too short, I think. Um, pretty simple, but fun little concept, you know, as I said in my video, who knew taking pictures of Pokemon could be so much fun? Uh, it, it really is a good game. Um, only gone back to it once or twice since, you know, back in the day. I do have the new Pokemon Snap for the Switch, which I have yet to finish, but I really enjoyed. Um, yeah, pretty much 
is what it advertises, taking pictures of Pokemon, and it's uh, more fun, for those who haven't played it, it's more fun than you'd expect. Uh, I, re I really, really enjoy Pokemon Snap, so, um, yeah, don't know what else to say about it. Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Stadium 2, I'll do like a lower A tier. Really enjoy those games. Um, oh yeah, we'll put it there. Really enjoy those games, um, especially like being able to play... I mean, I didn't have the Super Game Boy or anything, so being able to play the original Game Boy games on my TV was a really cool novelty at the time. And, uh, yeah, being able to transfer the Pokemon and battling in 3D was really cool. I remember trying to transfer Missing O, or Missing No, and it came out as, like, that little substitute thing, <laughs> which was really weird. Uh, I don't know why, I just thought of that. The mini games are awesome in that, I probably spent more time playing those than the actual battling. When you're playing solo, it can get boring after a while, which is probably why I, I haven't put I haven't put them up higher, you know. But if you can, you know, if you do have a friend with it and they have a transfer pack and you guys can use your own Pokemon to battle, pretty cool, but I rarely did that. I mean, I rarely, rarely did that, so... You know, I mean, I'm sure I missed out on a big element of the game, but, you know, from what I played of Pokemon Stadium, I remember really enjoying it, and, um... The Game Boy Tower was great, the minigames, like I said, the battling was fun enough, but in terms of the actual battling of it nowadays, I mean, there's so many other Pokemon games that have come out since that do it better. But again, for the time, it was a pretty big, pretty big novelty to be able to do that. It was the first time we could ever do that um, on a home console in 3D, so that was really, it was really fun and it was really exciting. So uh, yeah, Pokemon Stadium games are really good, I would say, so they deserve the A tier spot. Okay, and the next one is Star Fox 64, right? To friggin' S tier. Uh, yeah, I love Star Fox 64, fantastic game. Uh, one of the very best for the N64. It's just such a cool looking game, it's so much fun. Um, I actually really love the original Star Fox for the Super Nintendo as well, but I think the N64 version just kind of perfected it. Um, you know, there's always this debate about the N64's graphics, you know, people always... A lot of people crap on this era because it was sort of the awkward transition from, you know, sprites to full, you know, 3D renderings and all that, but... I don't think this game, this game, like, looks as dated as, you know, a lot of people might say it looks, I don't know. Maybe I'm just... maybe it's just stupid stuff I just hear from people and it's not necessarily the uh, the consensus I guess but Star Fox 64 still looks really good to me and it's really fun I really really love that game uh, it's just it's a blast to play the controls are great the you know I love you know Fox Falco Peppy Slippy they're sort of like silly commentary throughout it and it's just uh, it's just an epic game the music all of it great game uh, one of the very best for this N64 Star Wars 1 Pod Racer. This was surprisingly fun. I'm gonna put it in... I put it in B tier. And so was Rogue Squadron. I like the second one better, but, uh... You know, both of those are great. Shadows of the Empire I have. I'm gonna put that one in a C tier. Uh... I have that one as well. So I'll talk about all three of these Star Wars games. Uh, of the, these three, I think Rogue Squadron's the best. Uh, like I said, the second game... One of my very favorite GameCube games, but this one, from what I've played, I've really enjoyed. Um, and I think it's probably the best of the three here. Uh, just the idea of, like, being able to, to you know, control an R-Wing and, and, and just kind of fulfill these different um, missions and stuff directly from the movies is really cool. And then the Pod Racer game was just sort, is sort of like an unexpected, fun game from, you know, obviously it's about the pod racing in Star Wars Episode 1, which wasn't my favorite part of that movie, to be honest with you, but also, but translated well to a game. So it's kind of like, well, if the pod racing had just been, like, maybe <laughs> five minutes, not, like, barely five minutes, maybe two minutes of the movie, instead of, like, the long sequence it ends up being, and it's mostly confined to this game, that would actually be better. <laughs> I don't know. But it's a fun little game, cool little racer, racer and, um, then Shadows of the Empire, I mean, I, I've, I've got that on my, for N64, I got the cartridge. It's actually the only one of these three games I own. It's okay from what I played, but again, just couldn't really get into it. It wasn't, it wasn't bad, it wasn't, 
you know, it wasn't really... It wasn't great either, it was just sort of middle of the road for me. Like, a little below middle middle of the road, since these the other two are more in the... You can't see where I'm pointing, but yeah. They're, they're more in the middle of the road. <laughs> I'm probably pointing the wrong direction, one of these directions. More of the middle of the road than, than the other ones. So, each Star Wars game kind of brings its own unique thing to the table, but for me, Rogue Squadron's probably the best one, and then I'll actually put it here. And the pod racing game is not far behind it, but uh, Shadows of the Empire, good game. Nothing special in my opinion. Well, I'm going to put this one straight to S tier. Super Mario 64. Um, if you haven't seen my video already, I'll just spoil it. My favorite game for the Nintendo 64. Um, I don't know what else to say about this game that hasn't already been said. Uh, you know, it, it, groundbreaking, you know, it was the game that came in my N64, so it kind of blew my mind at the time with, you know, having only played the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis and, like, the NES, I, I, it blew my mind. The graphics, the gameplay, everything, it just, it was like my first step into a whole bigger, wider world of, of what n video games could be like, so it's obviously got that element, but... It's more than that, it's, you know, I still think the controls are really, really great and solid, some of the best controls of any game, um, ever. The, you know, like the hub world, that was all new at the time, it, it, it's one of the games that really does it the best, alongside probably Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, yeah, just so many memorable moments from the game, and super replayable, I, I could go on about Mario 64, I, I really, really love that game, so, yeah, solid S tier in my opinion. Super Smash Brothers also gets a solid S tier for me. Uh, it's uh, it's one of those games, man. It's um, you know, it's it's a timeless classic for a reason. Again, like Mario Kart, I think it's uh, you know, it's obviously come a long way. It's probably of the the mainline games, probably the not the worst, but you know what I mean. It's not as good as everything that came after it, but um, it's still a great game, man. It's one of the best N64 games for sure. Uh, best fighting game, hands down, in my opinion. Uh, for the for the N64 and um, introduced the whole concept of like first over Nintendo crossover. I don't think they'd really done that in, before, aside from like cameos and other games of characters. You know, uh, you know, I remember characters being in the background at Kirby in Kirby Superstar or st stuff like um, uh, you know uh, Super Mario RPG. There like Link and Samus being in like being cameos in that whatever. But there'd never been a full blown Nintendo crossover before somehow. And Mr. Masahiro Sakurai did it the best way possible by making a fighting game. And, you know, Mario, Link, Samus, Pikachu, Kirby, Yoshi, you know, every, Fox all got together. You got to pound the crap out of each other. And it was fun. And it also introduced me to a lot of other series. It introduced me to stuff like, you know, Metroid and and uh, Star Fox even to a degree. Because I hadn't played Star Fox before Smash Bros. So... You know, it, it was it was a gateway game for me to a bunch of Nintendo's other great franchises. So that was cool. Earthbound, another one, and I love the Mother series. And it's because of Ness's inclusion in Super Smash Brothers that I even know what Earthbound is. Me amongst many other people. So you know, it was really it was a really great game. Really changed you know changed uh, a lot of things for me in terms of you know games that I got into and everything, and uh, I love it. I will always love the original Super Smash Brothers. Um, probably not my favorite of the series at this point, but still fun to go back to once in a while. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. I'm gonna give a nice A tier to. I, um, I'm not a... I'm not a... I'm not a... I'm not a huge fan of... I shouldn't say that. I went from really disliking this game to it winning me over. That said, I'm still, it's still not like top tier Zelda to me. That belongs to Ocarina of Time, which I'll talk about in a second, which goes straight to S tier. Um, Majora's Mask really took me a while. I've talked about this before. We did a whole Let's Play on my channel of Majora's Mask, and um, my wife Rachel played most of it. And I really, really enjoyed watching her play play it, and then I decided I want to play it on my own, so I played the 3DS version, and she ended up sitting through most of that with me and helping me with it. I don't like the time travel, or at least the way it's utilized, the time element in the game. Um, it's a bit too... It's a bit too like you have to do like a list of... It almost feels like you're doing a list of tasks and you know you have to complete them within a certain amount of time and stuff and it's like, man, 
after a while, like, I don't really like that kind of thing, you know? Maybe it's because I'm bad at that in real life. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, I just don't, like, the time element, I didn't like being under pressure, f you know, to get things done. Like, there were situations, I get in ridiculous situations sometimes, like, where I'm fighting a dungeon boss, and it's the end of the third, it's, like, the end of the third day, and I've got, like, very little time to beat this thing, and, you know, I'm, like, I, I don't have, like, let's say, you know, I don't even have a fairy, and I'm, like, trying to fight this boss, and, like, some people might say, well, that adds to the intensity of it, whatever. No, it just made it stressful. And I had it, I've had a couple times where I had to, you know, I sa I'd save right before, like, there was a boss or some other big event that I'm trying to do. And the freaking like, freaking like, I have to restart the game because time runs out and the freaking moon crashes down. And uh, I could go on and on about my gripes with the game. That said, the story's great. Uh, the world is awesome. Aesthetically, it's like one of the coolest Zeldas. I love Skull Kid and uh, the whole idea of the Majora's Mask and everything. There's a lot about that game that's great. It's just the actual game elements themselves I'm not really a big fan of at times with this game. Ocarina of Time, perfect. Perfect game. Um, love everything about that game. We recently streamed all of uh, that game on the channel. I loved playing through it again. It still feels really epic. I mean, obviously there's stuff like Breath of the Wild. And, and stuff like that that's come, and Twilight Princess and games like that that have come after Ocarina of Time, that you'd think would dwarf the game, really doesn't. I mean, Ocarina of Time, I think, holds up quite well. Um, more than a lot of other games of this of this era, which I've said about a few of these games, but it's true. I mean, that's when you know you're dealing with the best of the best, I guess. But yeah, Ocarina of Time is just a sprawling, epic adventure, and I love it. It's, it's a fantastic game. Way better than Majora's Mask, so... You Majora's Mask fans, I don't even care. I don't know how you could like Majora's Mask more than Ocarina of Time. I don't- I feel like it's not even- Maybe it's not fair to compare the games, but like, I don't think it's even- I really don't think it's even close. I think Ocarina of Time is just- It is so far up above it. It's one of the very best Zelda games, so... Definitely belongs on the S tier. It's- There's times where it might be my favorite N64 game. It's- It's really, really hard to choose between that and- And Super Mario 64. And I'm sure, you know, I, as of recording this, I haven't published my top 20 N64 game video yet. So I'm sure I've ruffled feathers, but not having it as number one. And I understand why, but I mean, to me, it's like, you know, right hand and left hand. What do you choose, really, between Mario 64 and Ocarina of Time? Majora's Mask, still a great game, but yeah, not even close in my opinion. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. I'll put it in, I'll put it in B tier. I really enjoyed this game. My cousin had it when I was a kid and used to bring it over. We used to play it. I mean, I'm not a huge skateboard fan. I tried skateboarding when I was in high school and failed miserably at it. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I, I, Tony Hawk, I don't really know much about him other than this game and that he's like a really great skateboarder. But uh, this game was fun. I really enjoyed it. You know, we, we, my cousin would come over and we would play this for hours. It was really, really fun. The second one's better, I think, but the first one was, was really great too. And, um, yeah, I don't know, just a really cool, like, I mean, it's the first skating game, I'm really one of the only skating games I ever played, and I, I love it, I think it's really fun to play, and, um, well, it's not like high echelon, like, in the higher echelon of N64 games, to me, it's still really, really good, really solid, fun game, so yeah, Tony Hawk's Pro, Sk Pro Skater is definitely a classic for a reason. There's only two more here. Wave Race 64 I have not played, so I was wrong when I said I would played all those other games. So, it looks fun from what I've seen of the game. I've definitely seen, like, some footage of it, and it looks fun enough, but can't really say much. Never played it, so yeah. Might be shocking to some people, but yeah, just one of those games that flew under my radar. And lastly, uh, but not least... Yoshi Story, which I'm going to put in the middle of A tier. I, uh, I think it's a great game. I love Yoshi Story. Gets a lot of flack. It's too easy. It's too short. Blah, 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 blah. I think those things play to the strength of the game. Um, I did watch a video that uh, somebody did about this game. Kind of trying to de defend it. And even that guy said the boss fights, you know, are probably the big weakness. That they're pretty lame. I would agree with that because they're very easy. Doesn't matter to me, though. I think, uh, it's a fun, cozy little game. All the Yoshi games kind of are, really, uh... The only, the only games that really have a major challenge to them are probably, like, Yoshi's Island and, you know, maybe some of Woolly World. But, I mean, really, you know, as far as collect-a-thons, if you really try to get everything, like, if you try to clear all the 
all the levels by just only getting the melons in them in Yoshi's Story. It's actually really difficult, so it's not like it depends on how you play the game. That's I guess that's the beauty of Yoshi games. Like you could make them more complicated and difficult if you wanted to collect everything and you want to, you know, beat it a certain way. But like if you want to just casually play the game too, you could just play it. It's uh it's fun and I don't know why the sink's going off, but whatever. I'll keep that in. But yeah, Yoshi Story solid. I love it. it I made like I think 15 or 16 on my list or something and uh I mean honestly, I, I I almost kind of wanted to put it ahead, but then they're, of, or like even higher, but I was kind of like, well, yeah, that might be a little more personal preference, but like objectively, even I think some of these games that maybe I like a little less than Yoshi's Story are better than Yoshi's Story, so I kind of took that approach with the list, and uh, if it were me, I think Yoshi's Story would at least be like top 15, so yeah, loved it, good memories of it as a kid, and uh, Yoshi! I don't know. I love Yoshis. My daughter loves Yoshis. My wife is purple Yoshi. She loves Yoshis. I don't know. I got a, I got a Yoshi thing going on here, so, yeah. On that note, keep an eye out for the next tier list, which hopefully will be me ranking Yoshi games, since we're at the end of the video, and you watched it. Thank you. I don't know what I'm doing right now. Thank you, everybody, for watching this. Thanks to everybody who watched my Top 20 N64 games video. I really enjoyed making that worked really hard on it so if you haven't seen it i'll link it right at the end here with some other n64 content thank you guys so much have a wonderful day and peace